slow down. Where are you rushing to, young man? <clears throat> You're already there, old Venetian sang. Yesterday is ashes, tomorrow wood. Only today the fire burns brightly, a Native American sang. We live in a world where hectic, hectic speediness going nowhere often takes the place of the gradual development of the soul and soulmate relations. We've been conditioned to lean forward in time, chasing after the red balloons, dangling carrots, golden rings, hotties, soulmates, ideal weight, and other images of success. We hurry through time, afraid that we'll miss it. Like the FOMO that drives a lot of people, the fear of missing out. It's always just up ahead, that thing that's always eludes your grasp. Gotta keep going so that you keep reaching toward it. And there is a very funny moment in the last and dreadful season of Lost. Um, for those of you who have watched the series, or for those of you who haven't, I guess, um, it's not much of a plot spoiler. Um, <clears throat> the series started brilliantly for like at least three seasons or so. And then, um, and then it just kind of like, they ran out of ideas. Everybody had like died and been reborn like three or four times. Um, you know, you find that the, the uh, classic problem with committee written things, especially series where they don't know where it's going, that, that um, it can start brilliantly and then become just a god awful mess. And so that's what was going on in the last season. And, um, <clears throat> and but there's an amazing scene that happens in the last season where there was this African American woman, late middle aged or older. Um, who in like the first season the, the jet had broken in half and we're like in different parts of the island and she had a late middle age to senior citizen husband, a white guy who she had not been able to find. And finally, in one of the seasons, they, they find each other, but then they've kind of like fallen out of the whole series. We haven't seen anything about them for like at least a, a season or two. And, and now all the main characters are like, you know, um, running down the beach in the island um, and because of some like total like MacGuffin kind of scenario that, you know, they have to do such and such or the whole the island will end and the whole universe will end. And it, uh, and they, they find this older black woman now and she's just like putting up the wash on a line like between palm trees and she's just been like living in a hut with her husband um, near the beach and is like just two and, they, and they've and they just separated themselves from the rest of the, the group that are like busy doing all these, you know, different uh, crazy um, improbable plot developments. And so anyway, they're like breathlessly running down the beach and they're like, they find her and like, you've got to help us. Like the such and such is going to end and then the island will blow up and like the whole reality will end. And, you know, and, and she just looks at them and goes like, what is it with you people? It's always something. And she just goes back to putting up the wash. So this is kind of the, the, um, the difference between the person who's always living, you know, like a breathless drama queen. And, um, <clears throat> and to some extent, it, it, it describes my way of being, which is more focused on doing. Um, but it's kind of archetypally appropriate for me because I've always had this extremely strong, um, implicit sense of life mission now, but now has very tangible goals. And so for me, life is more fun in that archetypally heroic mode of like, you know, I've got to get the life mission done and, and this kind of thing. Whereas like I've known some um, cosmic feeling types, kind of the oldest of all types, real old souls. And they're just much more interested in unstructured being time and like, what is all this rush all about? And, and so on. Um, and so maybe, you know, sometime if I live to be my 80s or 90s, I'll just want to like stand on a balcony and look out on this, out, out at the sunset and just, um, experience life in being time rather than in doing time. Um, <clears throat> so it all depends on you. But for a lot of people, they're, they're busy rushing up a ladder of success only to find it's leaning against the wrong wall and this kind of thing. And um, they don't slow down enough to recognize whether, if anything, they're doing is something they will remember well on their deathbed. 
or not. <clears throat> when we are goal-oriented rather than path-oriented, we live in a state of chronic time sickness. We hurry distractedly through time, trying to get someplace we think we see up ahead. Meanwhile, the time we are living in, the now-ever, is degraded by our trying to hurry through it to get where we think we want to be. But no matter how much we try to rush through time, we are still always in the now-ever. Our lives unfold, and people, places, and things all change, but it's always us in the now-ever. If we are preoccupied with the current people, places, and things, or the ones that we hope to find in the future, then we neglect those two constant factors, us and the now-ever. In doing so, we lose the beauty and many possibilities of the now-ever. We also lose ourselves, and it always diminishes life when you neglect your relationship to yourself. That's another of the problems with trying to hurry through time. And, and it's also kind of like anti-feminine thing, where you're trying to hurry through time to get to some more feminine oasis, but living in a flattened, unfeminine time in the present, like the... Um, uh, assembly line worker who's counting down the um, hours until quitting time when he can get with his girlfriend or somebody working an office job they don't like but is counting down the days till uh, they can go on a tropical vacation and experience a little bit of tropical time or um, the person who is um, counting down the days to retirement and yet many people don't live very long past retirement uh, an excellent guidance counselor I knew at the last high school I worked at is a wonderful man, a real advocate for kids. Finally, he retired, um, and on the he, he and his wife went on one of those like cruises to nowhere where they you know give you giant buffet meals, and he had a heart attack on the cruise and died. When we try to travel into the future to find our image of success. We forget an essential problem with travel as transformational intention. As Emerson put it, the problem with travel is that you take yourself with you. The problem with traveling into the future is that you take yourself with you. If you rush toward your image of success, you may lose sight of what you take with you. You. This is why so many people who achieve the image of success don't always enjoy it, and sometimes self-destruct. Uh, these are, again, the people that rush up the ladder of success only to find it's leaning against the wrong wall. If you are a super ambitious asshole who eventually gets to be a movie star or a financial success or whatever, by ruthlessly manipulating others, you may transform the people, places, and things around you, but it will still be you in the now-ever. And in this example, the you that is in the now-ever as your one constant companion is an asshole. Hurrying through time to have the life you think you want doesn't work. Wholeness can only be found where it always is, within. So the more you try to chase it down by racing through linear time, the more it eludes your grasp. This is the ringwraith's path, forever seeking the precious in the outside world, forever withering with unfulfilled desire. Trying to hurry through time to find, that th find things that forever elude your grasp can lead to depression and crushing despair. This is very much like um, the point of... Um, the movie Citizen Kane and the meaning of Rosebud that sets up the film. I won't give you the plot spoiler. We feel defeated by life when we are trying to do something that is intrinsically self-defeating. And so in the card, you will see a picture of a cardboard sign with red balloons bobbing hyperkinetically in the wind and, um, and a sign that says, hurry, don't miss it. And what they were advertising was a garage sale that it was, had already been over for a couple of days. Whatever rushes you toward the future is rushing you into a ghetto existence, an existence as empty as an expired garage sale. We need to recognize that we are already there and stop rushing through time. Work with what is happening in the moment, not what you think should happen in the future. 
Fully experience where you are right now. It is empowering to assume that the moment presents you with what you need to work with. There may be hardships, anxieties, and problems that seem insurmountable. If you are climbing a mountain at night in a winter storm, then that's where you are. You are not standing on the summit of the mountain in the future. You are also not lying frozen in the bottom of a crevasse in another possible future. And one of the reasons people race through time is they imagine there'll be a future that will be better than um, the present. But often that's not the case. Often the, 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 what will come in the future is another ba- you know, weird balance of light and dark. Um, but because people don't want to accept the dark that's in the present, they try and rush through time to get to this imagined oasis. And times of light and dark are powerful times. Um, you learn a lot more in a time of light and dark than just in a time of all dark or all light. So embrace that present moment with all the things about it that you think are imperfect. So the position of Taoism is that despite what the ego thinks, the universe is unfolding as it should. Right now, you are reading, you are listening to an oracle card and having an experience of meaning with it. Consulting with an oracle is entering into a relationship with it for usually less than an hour. Inhabit, own, and recognize that relationship happening um, in real time right now. Try not to outsource the meaning of this card to the future. Experience the meaning right now. It's not only about how you will live life after the reading. It's about how you are living your life in the now ever. You are already there.